G'day mates, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm doing my most requested ever guide video today and it's all about mouse and keyboard. What is the best mouse? What is the best keyboard? What are the best keybinds? What's the best sensitivity? High sense, low sense, all those questions I'm gonna answer today and I'm gonna give you some answers that you haven't gotten before that I guarantee will help you become a much, much better player. I'm even gonna give you some practice routines, some things you can work on to make sure you're getting better. Cause a lot of the time people are doing everything right. They're putting in the time, they're putting in the effort, there's just a few things wrong that nobody tells you that so many people are getting wrong. And I'm talking from beginner, you just swapped to mouse and keyboard to advanced pro levels. There are so many things that people are doing wrong that can be fixed in a matter of seconds. So let's just jump into it. Let's start talking about how you can become as good as possible on mouse and keyboard. I am about to give you the best piece of advice you will ever get when it comes to mouse and keyboard. And this will answer almost every question you've ever had about mouse and keyboard. Preference. There is no one best keyboard. There is no one best mouse, best switches, best sensitivity, best keybinds. It is preference. I'm going to give you some optimal keybinds, some of the better keyboards, some of the better mice. But at the same time, if something works for you or something works for you that doesn't work for your friend, that's okay. It is all preference. And this is where I see people go wrong from the very, very beginner to even the absolute best pros when they always think that just something is the best and they try to change things when things don't work or they try to change to what their friends are doing sometimes it is just the best for you and that's okay so before i talk about the keyboard the mouse the keybinds i'm going to talk about what is optimal and what's best to start with but you have pros out there like stretch who are some of the best players in the world using function keys if you don't know what function keys are they're the keys at the very top of your keyboard f1 f2 f3 and f4 and he's not the only one there's heaps of pros there's metro there's avery so if they can be that insanely good on those keybinds i'm going to explain why and what must memory is versus optimization. So maybe you don't have to change everything and maybe that's your problem. You've been changing too much. So let's start talking about what are some of the best things you can be doing? What are some of the best keyboard and mouse? But let's talk about it from what's working for you, not just telling you to change everything to do what I do because apparently it's better. Let's start off with the hardware first. Let's start off talking about keyboard and mouse. Now, my opinions of this are gonna come from me using a whole bunch of different keyboards, a whole bunch of different mice, and talking to so many different pros and experts when it comes to what's the best keyboard, what's the best mouse. Now, again, we're gonna be talking about this from the point of preference. There are some that are better than others, and the higher quality does normally get you a better keyboard and mouse, but when it comes to certain aspects, they are just preference. So, let's start off talking about a keyboard. Now, when it comes to keyboard size, again, this is preference for a few reasons though. You can get a full size keyboard, you can get a TKL which is 80% or you can get a 60% keyboard. Now most of this is just how much room do you want on your desk. If you're a lower sense player and again that's not better or worse than high sense, I'll get to sensitivity later. If you're a lower sense player it might be worth you maybe getting a 60% keyboard so it takes up less room on your desk so you have more room to move your mouse. That's one of the main reasons why you get a different size keyboard but for the most part again just preference. Get the one that you like. Maybe you do a bit of video editing. Maybe you want the delete keys, the arrow keys. You don't want to go all the way down to a 60%. Maybe you like just having a bigger keyboard. It doesn't really matter too much. The main component of the keyboard that's going to make the biggest difference is the switches. Now, the switch is the actual mechanic inside the keyboard that registers when you press the key in. Now, these work insanely differently on a whole bunch of levels. So, you've got so many different types of switches and so many people will tell you, oh, reds are the best switches. Cherry MX reds. Nah, Cherry MX browns are better. Silver are better. No, I really like clicky blues. There is no difference. There is a massive difference in which ones you might like because they do have different functionality. But as far as which one is the best, it is personal preference. You could tell me a switch and I could find you a pro who is absolutely dominating with that switch. But let's talk about some of the main choices that people like so you can have an informed decision when you get yours. The best thing you can do to find the switch that you like for your keyboard is go to a store that has different keyboards with different switches Press the keys, see what it feels like. But let's get you some of the basics across the line now. Let's talk about the different types of switches before we talk about the different weights of switches. There's a graphic here that I got from switchandclick.com that actually explains it really, really well when you're comparing linear versus tactile versus clicky. But let's, let me break it down on this and then what it actually means for Fortnite and gaming. So you have linear switches, which are smooth, consistent. They make quiet noise. If you press them down, it is the same smooth press all the way through. There's no bump. You don't get a sensation feeling at 
the bottom of the press, it just goes through and it releases. Now, tactile switch is where you get the bumpy feel. They're moderate noise and they're beginner friendly. Don't worry about the beginner friendly stuff. What it means by bumpy is you press the key in and when it gets to the point where it actuates, where it actually registers the key press, you'll feel a bump so you know you've pressed the key in. People like that responsiveness. They like knowing they've pressed the key in rather than just pressing it in a little bit. Then you have clicky, which is bumpy. Again, don't worry too much about that. Loud noise, beginner friendly. Don't worry about that. So the main differences are linear. You press it in really, really fast. It goes in fast. It comes out fast. There's no sensation feedback. The only problem is it means you're easy to fat finger it, which means you're easy to press your keys by accident. So if you're someone who maybe has a tendency to already fat finger your key binds a little bit, which I mean, like say you're trying to, let's say you have your stare on V and sometimes you quite often press C or you press V without even trying to because you're just having your finger resting on it and you accidentally press it in. You might be better off with a tactile or a clicky switch because tactile, you can press it in, but until you press it far enough in, until you get it to the actuation point, it won't register the click. Now, clicky keys are very heavy keys that you have to press really hard to go in to get them to come back out. That's why they're so loud. So again, there is no preference. There is no actual better... Uh, switch in there. It's all preference. You've got players like Mongrel who love to play on uh, clicky keys. That's why his keyboard is so ridiculously insanely loud. But then you've got people who love playing on linear. I would say linear is probably the most popular, the linear red switches. I use Cherry MX reds myself. I like them because even though I am a bigger guy, I got heavy hands. I like to be able to click things as fast as I possibly can, but I do have a tendency to fat finger a little bit. So I do actually have a Razer Huntsman as well that doesn't have uh, red switches. It has blue switches. Sorry, per purple switches and they are very, very clicky and they are very hard to press in. So I don't fat finger things as much, but the trade off for me is I just can't build or edit as fast. I can't seem to press them in quick enough to get them to register. And I'm a streamer. They are way, way too loud for me. But all I wanted to get across from that is whatever keyboard that you buy, it's personal preference. Find one that you like, potentially go into a store, try one out, try your friends, see how you go and then decide off that. Just because, you know, Booger uses a Cherry MX Red, but then Mon Mongrel uses a uh, Cherry MX Blue. Doesn't mean either one's better. Find one that you like that fits your playstyle, but just be informed on how it works so you know it can fit your playstyle before you buy the wrong keyboard. The last thing to mention on the switches is the actual brand of switches does matter. Cherry MX is usually most people's go-to as some of the best key switches out there for a good price. You do have other switches like Gatorons. If you guys have watched Jerrion's video, you know he loves his Gatoron optical switches on the GK61. So you can go all kind of crazy like that, but just watch some reviews, make Make sure that you're not trying to go too cheap on the keyboard because sometimes even though it's a mechanical keyboard, if you're getting it somewhere cheap like a supermarket or something like that, if it's like 20 bucks, the mechanical switches aren't going to be great. It is worth spending a little bit more, but at the same time, going all the way up on the top end, like getting the Apex Pro TKL that's like, you know, three, four hundred dollars just so you can change the actuation point. I don't think that's worth it as well. You can find plenty of phenomenal keyboards for around $80 like the GK61. You can find other great keyboards for around 100 I love HyperX. I use a bunch of HyperX keyboards. Again, I'm sponsored by HyperX, but I don't have to say their keyboards are great. I choose to use them. I got a Razer Huntsman TKL. Again, that keyboard was phenomenal, but it didn't have switches that I liked because I tried out Clicky and found out I don't like Clicky. So again, find a keyboard that's decent build quality with good switches and find the switches you like. Before I get into keybinds and sense that's coming next, last thing is obviously the mouse. Now, this is where it gets really weird for me on Fortnite. The trend is to go lighter and lighter and try to find the lightest mouse you possibly can to the point where if you squeeze it too hard, it's going to crack under the weight. I'm not saying light mice are bad, but I'm going to say this again. It's preference. Just comment preference down below for the meme of it. Let's just do a count going, maybe count how many times I say it in this video. But at the same time, with the mouse, you really want to find one that fits the grip of your hand, then go for weight. There is no point having the lightest mouse ever if it doesn't feel nice in your hand. People don't even realize if you've just gone into mouse and keyboard, there's a whole bunch of different mouse grips. I'm not going to go into detail on that today. You can look up other videos on YouTube. I'll put one in the description down below that I used to watch that I find phenomenal, but you can hold a mouse differently. And depending on the shape is going to affect that. I've got rather large hands. I've got to move my, my bungee. I've got rather large hands. So I like to use a Razer Death Adder because it's quite a big mouse that fits really nicely in my hands. I did go for a lighter mouse. I got the new HyperX Ultralight to try it out. The mouse shape felt really good. Same with the Glorious Model D. I tried that out as well. But for me, I always go back to the Razer because I have a bunch of 
muscle memory having used it. I hold it comfortably and the side buttons feel nice. So if you found a mouse that feels nice for your hand, don't worry too much about the weight. Don't worry if it's too light or too heavy, if it feels good for you. Again, I can find pros that are out here on mice that weigh like 40 grams. I know the new ultralight is ridiculous. Everyone's going crazy for the final mouse. Or I know pros who are playing on absolute bricks at over 120 grams who are still insane. The main thing is if you have to really get like a basic trade-off, the lighter your mouse, the better your editing and building is usually going to be because you can flick faster and it's a lot more responsive and faster to move. But quite often your aim will struggle. If you're finding your aim is really, really inconsistent, there's a good chance the light mouse is what's doing it to you. Because if you don't have the weight of the mouse to evenly slide, if you're tracking someone, you can really only hit flick shots because you're, you're whipping it around so quickly, especially if you're on high sense. But the reason why you might be struggling a lot with your tracking or your consistency with your aim is because your mouse is too light. But again, personal preference, find one that works for you. Go to a store, pick up a few different mice, play around with them, try to find one that fits your grip, that feels nice with the weight. And then the next thing is test the side buttons and test the scroll wheel. So many mouse mice I've had feel amazing. The Viper Ultimate was great. I love the wireless feature, but the side buttons were way too small for me. So I couldn't use it. Again, some pros love that mouse. They're phenomenal with it preference. We've gone through the hardware. We've talked about the keyboard. We've talked about the mouse. You guys are hopefully not more confused in the start of the video. Hopefully you can figure out what you want to go buy. Even though I haven't given you a bunch of recommendations, I've just told you to find what works for you. But let's talk about keybinds. Let's talk about sensitivity now, because this is a big one as well. And again, guess what? It's preference. This is the main thing that I see go crazy wrong with a lot of people. I see so many pros or so many players when they feel like they're having a slump, they're plateauing with their skill and they change all their keybinds. I've seen so many pros change their whole keybinds, but you know what? More often than not, the pros switch back. And this is what blows people's minds. I know, again, people are probably gonna start commenting Jerry in this one. I love Jerry. Jerry the homie and I love his optimized videos. And again, if you're starting out on mouse and keyboard, finding optimal binds and changing it is phenomenal. But even Jerry, in his most recent video talked about how certain binds he wish he had, but he's too far gone. And this is what I kind of want to explain. It's a concept I want to talk about. It's muscle memory versus optimization. So yes, if you could take the best player in the world and give them optimal keybinds and they had the thousands of tens of thousands of hours they have of muscle memory on those binds, yeah, they might be a little bit better. But if you take them and you switch their binds a month ago and now they're on optimized binds, but they don't have the same level of muscle memory, they're not going to perform as well, especially in the moments like big tournaments, games that matter to qualify when you're about to make earnings. The games that really matter is where muscle memory comes out on top. And this is where I reference people like Stretch, like Mitro, some of the best players in the world who play on function keys. The reason why that works is because their muscle memory of how many thousands of hours they've spent on those keybinds trumps them switching it to other keybinds and relearning them. You've got freaks out there like Martos who can relearn his entire keybinds with a joystick keyboard. That's insane. But for most of us, it's worth finding binds that work well enough and then grinding them out. So just because you hit a plateau, just because you hit a point in your gameplay where you feel like you're not doing the best, don't just change all your keybinds. Maybe change one or two that are a little bit unoptimal and go from there. Now, if you are new to mouse and keyboard though, and you have the luxury of starting off with optimal binds, the main thing you want to focus on when making your binds is keeping your fingers on your movement keys at all time. So you should always have your fingers on W, A, S, and D as often as possible, which means that you want to usually try and put two builds on your mouse button. I would recommend wall 100% because it means it makes taking walls and moving around when you're tapping or protecting really important. Your, your wall bind is your most important bind. Then after that, a lot of people say stare. I would actually say cone. In the new metas right now, I think it's better to be able to place cones more effectively. It means that if you have it on your mouse bind, you're really good at pickaxing walls and sliding cones through them. You're really good at piece controlling people from above. I find the cone build is actually more important now than stairs just because of the way people use them. When you're building, quite often you're staring yourself up, but when you start playing offensively, when you try to catch your opponent, you're using cones. But again, it doesn't matter. Just pick which one. Just try to have wall on your mouse button. Then for your other two binds, it's great if you can get one of them on your thumb. So like a C, a V, or a B. So maybe have your stair on that. Maybe have your floor on that. And then your other bind would be left shift because that's what you use your pinky for. So with that one, you now have your three fingers on W, A, S, and D at all times. You're pressing your other build with your thumb. So C, V, whatever's comfortable, depending on you. And then you're pressing left shift with your pinky. And then you're pressing your other two binds with the mouse button. So you 
never have to go off W, A, S, and D. That's usually like optimal binds. From there, you have to find an edit bind. Usually people go E or F because it's close to their movement as well. Again, when it comes to weapons, most people stick to one, two, three, four. They might throw in Q or R or some of the other binds that are close, F for pickaxe, things like that. But again, those are all kind of just preferences of what you can do to make it optimal. But if you're close enough, let's say like me, for example, I wish I didn't have this, but I have, I actually have floor on my mouse button, which is not great. I wish it was wall. And then I have a weapon bind on there. I would ultimately like to change that, but the amount of muscle memory I have, if I change it, I would have to play for months and months. And I don't even play that much. I'm a commentator and it's still not worth it for me. The amount of pros I've reached out to who are like, look, unless your binds are absolutely terrible. And even then your binds can't get much worse than function keys. When I talk about, you know, or oh, having movement at all times, stretch has to reach his, his finger off his movement all the way up to F1, F2, F3, and F4 to build. And he's still one of the best players in the world. It just shows that the binds you have now, unless they are absolutely abysmal, it's probably worth sticking to them, grinding them out rather than trying to change them. Unless maybe you're someone who picks up new binds really easily, but most of us just don't. Last thing to talk about, sensitivity. And now let me guess, what are your thoughts? What do you think I'm gonna say? It's preference, it's preference, it's that simple. High sense or low sense, they both have their advantages as whichever feels best for you and whichever you like the most. So again, build up some muscle memory on a sensitivity, try not to change it too much. I find changing sensitivity is not as bad as changing keybinds, but at the same time, find a sense that works for you and stick to it. There are some basic advantages of both. The lower your sensitivity, quite often your aim is gonna be better because you can track better because you can move with your arm and your shoulder more than just flicking your wrist around all over the place which will give you more smooth control. Or even then, if you're only using your wrist, the lower the sense lets you track a little bit smoother. But at the same time, some people say it makes your builds and your edits worse. I find my editing's actually better on low sense because most of the time I mess up my edits because I over edit. I flick too much before I confirm it and or if you have edit on release before I release it. And then unfortunately, the higher sense messes me up. The higher sense does make my builds better because I can flick around faster. But ultimately, I fall in the medium sense. I'm full. 400 DPI, I'm about 12 or 13%. So I'm low to medium. I've tried high before, but then in the new season, when shotguns, when pumps got taken out and you really needed to hit consistent shots with your shotgun, you really need to be able to beam with your SMG and your AR. You needed a good follow-up. I found that lowering my sense made my aim better. So that fit my preference for this season. If pumps come back and I'm back to trying to flick my shots as much as possible, I'll probably up my sense again. But again, it's personal preference. I can find you pros out there that have insane insanely low sensitivity that are absolute gods like Volks in OCE, super low sense. And then I can find people like we obviously know Benji Fishy and Savage have been on ridiculous high sense. They're slowly coming down now to get a little bit lower. But again, personal preference, find what works for you, find what fits your play style, find a mouse that complements your sensitivity. So if you're super high and then you have an ultra light mouse as well, it's going to be really hard to hit your shots. So try to complement it, but just find what works for you. Now, I know I didn't give you a whole bunch of straight, buy this keyboard, buy this mouse, do these keybinds, do this sensitivity. A lot of people have already done that. If you want that, that content's out there. But if you've tried that content and it's not helping you, this is why. You need to understand the thought process behind what you're doing rather than just blindly following someone else's keybinds or mouse suggestion and wondering why it's not working for you. So I hope this video helped. I wanted to make something a little bit different when I keep getting asked this question. If you like the video, please chuck a like on it. Let me know in the comments section down below what your count got to for me saying preference. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.